Hey guys, how are you going? Welcome to deepcreditrisk.com. In this video, we'll show you a few basic Python concepts for credit risk analytics. Let's get started. We'll introduce you to two Python packages, pandas and numpy, and we'll discuss how to subsample, create objects, describe, tabulate, plot, sample design, and last but not least, model and predict. Let's get started. In order to get started, we load our DCR data and code. We press Shift Enter to execute the code. Pandas is a popular package for econometric analysis. Pandas allows you to process data in data frames. Rows are numbered by time periods. Rows are numbered by observation numbers. Columns are usually numbered by feature names. Pandas comes with a broad range of econometric operations and is heavily used for risk modeling in conjunction with other packages such as SATS models. Let's have a look how a data frame in Pandas feels. We call our dataset by executing data and pressing Shift Enter in the editor. We now see a summary of a data frame in Pandas. Note that every row represents an observation Note that we see a number of features starting with feature ID, which is a loan ID, time, which is the timestamp of the observation time, and so on. Let's have a quick look at another package called NumPy. NumPy allows to process data in so called arrays. Arrays are very similar to data frames, except that they do not carry labels. Arrays are numbered. NumPy uses zero-based indexing, that is, rows and numbers in terms of numbering start with zero and then increase in increments of one. NumPy, like Pandas, comes with a broad range of uh, operations. However, NumPy focuses on offering scientific operations and it is also NumPy that is heavily used in the machine learning space in conjunction with other popular packages such as scikit-learn. I'll now show you how to create smaller samples from our big dataset data. We can create a smaller sample by extrapolating features. In this particular case, I want to extrapolate the features loan ID, time, and FICO score at loan origination. We do that by calling our data frame data and extrapolating the three features into square brackets and within quotation marks. Note that features need to be separated by commas. We can now see a smaller data set that only includes the three features, loan ID, time and FICO score. In the next step, we can create objects. We create an object by naming the object, in this case object, and allocating, for example, a subsample to the object. The allocation occurs by using the equal sign. Now objects can be, like in this case, data frames. Objects can also be methods that are applied to data frames. We can print the new object object by writing object and pressing shift enter. We can also describe data by chaining to the data frame, in this case object, the describe command followed by round brackets. The describe command produces a table that has one column per feature and in the rows it reports the observation numbers, the average, the standard deviation, the minimum, the 25th, 50th and 75th percentile as well as the maximum value. In our case, for example, the mean FICO score is 673.357 over all observations. We can round numbers using the round command. So for example, in the previous table that results from the describe command, we can chain the round command followed by two round brackets and we observe that the table numbers have been rounded to one decimal point. If you wish to have a different number of decimals, you can add the number of decimals of your choice within the round brackets. We can also produce frequency tables using the crosstab command from pandas. We reference to the crosstab command using pd for pandas dot crosstab 
and in round brackets we specify our data frame, the variable or feature to be analyzed, in our case time, and specify the columns, in this case counts. We see that we observe 21 observations in period 1, 51 observations in period 2, and so on. We can also calculate means by time. We do this by taking a data frame, like our data frame object, chaining to the data frame a group by statement, in brackets a group by variable, here time, and in square brackets the variable to be analyzed, here the FICO score at loan origination. We further chain the method of operation that we want to analyze. If we want to have a mean value by time, we chain the mean command followed by round brackets. We can also create a new column that includes the time period next to the average by time. We do this by chaining the reset underscore index command in round brackets drop equals false. The reset underscore index command resets the index to zero based indexing. At the same time, the drop equals false command implies that the previous index is moved into a new feature column and stored. Now this little trick allows us to create a second column that stores the by variables of our previous operations. This is very useful if we would like to plot in a diagram the time period and the average FICO scores by time. We create plots using the package matplotlib. matplotlib is one of the most popular packages for plotting in Python. We call matplotlib using the PLT acronym and we chain to the PLT acronym the plot method. In this case, we are plotting the time periods on the x-axis and we are plotting the average FICO scores by time on the y-axis. We call the values from our data frame object 2. We label the x-axis time and we label the y-axis FICO and we limit our y-axis to the value range of 400 to 850. Finally, we plot our, our diagram using the show method. In this particular case, we can now see the average FICO score over time. And we see that the average FICO score at loan origination over time increases over time. We can also create subsamples in a different way. We can, for instance, create two data sets. One data set that collects all the information observed before period 27, and another data set that uh, collects all the information observed at period 27 and thereafter. This is very useful to create one data set for model training and another data set for model validation. We call our first data set, therefore, the train data set, and our second data set, the test data set. We can analyze the number of rows and number of columns in all the data frames. The original data set had 62,178 observations and 28 variables or features. The train data set has 13,275 observations and 28 features. And the test data set has 48,903 observations and 28 features. We can also estimate regression models. For re estimating regression models, we can use the STATS models package. STATS models is a very popular package for econometric analysis. We call the STATS models package using the acronym SMF and we chain the OLS method for ordinary least square regressions. We specify our model equation by typing formula equals the left hand side variable, for example the interest rate, and the right hand side variable, for instance the FICO score. We use our train data set and we fit the model using the fit method. We can receive a model summary statement by chaining the summary statement to our model object. We then observe a common uh, estimation output that includes important measures such as the R-square and the parameter estimates, in our case the intercept and the estimate for FICO score. We can also use the newly created object model for prediction. We can chain to the object model the predict method and in round brackets the data set that we're going to use, here the test data set. We then obtain an array that contains the predicted values for the interest rate. Isn't that cool? 
I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you a lot to get started with our data set. Have a great day. Bye bye.